Hi, everyone. Uh, let's wait just for two more minutes. Uh, meanwhile, I would like to ask uh, a favor. As we are here with three different international federations, I would like to ask you type on the chat box where are you from, your country, and which federation you are, like IPSA, World Ability Sports, or Virtus. Please. So, for example, uh, is Spain from IPSA? or Brazil for, from Virtus, please. If you are not from any international federation, just please, uh, type none or... Thanks. <laughs> I'm happy to see that we have some friends from Terra Dance here. And in, in some days we are going to have a competition in Turkey, so really great. Thanks for joining us. Thank you to you for inviting me in Turkey. <laughs> And Japan firm for Fava side. Okay, one minute and we are going to start. Let's be on time as much as possible. Um, please, next time, just double check the time zone. This is something that's it's a trick for many of us. I'm in, uh, in America, motion in, in UK, and then, for example, you're aging in Japan, so it's many different time zones. So if you have any question and doubt, please, that, uh, type us on uh, Instagram or Facebook just to, to make sure, okay? To be ease, Moshi is going to post, uh, and also for IPSA and World Ability, we are going to post uh, UK Times, that is Central Europe, right, Moshi? Uh, yeah, just a little bit. Depending on which country in the Europe, it can vary, but yeah, British Standard Time should be fine, yeah. Yeah, so maybe if you have any question about time zone, just double check what time is in UK and you see how many hours difference. So let's start. Um, first of all, thanks everyone for joining us. This is our first uh, seminar and this is our first step for our Untitled Awareness Program for both federations, for all of them for IPSA, Blind Sports Federation, for World Ability Sports, that it's fencing, para dance, and para hockey, and Virtus with several sports, but uh, for Paralympics, swimming, athletics, table tennis. We have equestrian, we have a taekwondo, karate, judo, so many sports. So thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, in the end of the, the seminar, our friend Philip, that is here, it's going to give a, uh, um, uh, some information, so please wait until the end, okay? And if you have any question regarding the topic that we are going to talk, please type on the chat box and we are going to check and answer all of you, okay? Thanks again for coming. I'm going to share my screen and uh, also I would like to say thanks for Moshi that is here with us. She's the manager for our uh, for Virtus Communication Department. She supported us very hardly with all the posts, seminars, ideas. So thanks, Moshe. Thanks for for being here with me. Uh, let's. See. You're very welcome. I'm going to close my camera so that your uh, presentation captures the wider screen. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Mm, I think it's okay. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. So if you have any problem with the technology, please tell us. It's the first time that we are using this, this type for seminars. So tell us if you have any trouble. Again, if you join us just a few minutes ago, please type your country and which federation you are from. IPSA, World Ability Sport, Virtus on none in your case. This way we can see uh, our audience, okay? 
I promise I will be very fast. This is a short seminar, and the idea is just uh, talk about specific topics every month. So this month we are going to talk about what's doping, the general uh, information, and the next one we are going to talk about the list of prohibited substances. So be aware of our social medias and the day that we are going to, to have our seminar. So it's important to, let's just double check here. Uh, what's doping? This is a very important question that m many athletes ask me, like, what's exactly, what's doping exactly? By WADA, that we are going to talk about this, is defined that it's a violation of one or more uh, anti-doping uh, rules described by WADA code. For our athletes, remember that we have many possibilities of anti-doping violations that we are going to explain here. So it's a very big, possi many, many possibilities, okay, to be doped. But it, the most important is remember that it's against the sport spirit. It's not play fair, okay? So let's explain what's the difference between anti-doping rule violations and treats of integrity, okay? Treats of integrity, it's, for example, use a type of technology that's not allowed. Use like fast skiing, mirrors on the bike, or game chairs, so with different uh, size, for example, for, for wheelchair rugby, or for ring ball, we have special dimensions. So this is very important. This is technology. It's not an anti-doping rule violation. If you know some, someone is using some types of this technology, what are you going to do? To talk with your coach, okay? Other type of treats of integrity, it's classification. You probably hear about some misrepresentation. What does mean mean misrepresentation? Go, sorry. Misrepresentation. It's when someone try to act to to be more impaired than supposed to be. So someone that is able to move the leg and try to pretend that it's not possible. And the classifiers are having some trouble during the evaluation. This is misrepresentation. And if you have any problem with this, who are you looking for? The classifiers, okay? You must talk with them, especially with them. And the last one, it's some attitudes, especially match fixing. Uh, match fixing, it's, it's growing faster. Thanks God, it's not very fast in the Paralympic movement, but we have also. So what's match fixing? When someone is trying to lose in purpose, or when someone tried to manage or adulteration the final results of the competition. And who you look must look for? The coach and the referees, okay? So let's get back. Technology issues, we must talk with the coach and referees. Classification, we must talk with the classifiers. And match fixing with the referees or coach, okay? But all of them are not a, a question about doping. It's just treat of integrity. Which one is doping? Those here. AAFs that we call adverse analytical finding. That it's when we collect a sample, a urine, a blood, and we find some substance inside the sample. Or other type ADPRs, anti-doping rule violations. I'm going to talk in the next slide about this. What's anti-doping rule violations? WADA, that it's the big agent that's in charge of anti-doping. WADA create all the rules, all the protocols, and us, international federations, we must follow those rules. Yes, and they create 11 possibilities to be considered doping. I'm going to talk one by one. And if you have a question, please type on the chat. Today, we are going to talk just about this. So don't let your question for the next day. We are here for, for this, okay? And if it's too hard to understand or too difficult, please ask the question, okay? We are going to explain it another another way. First of all, 
athletes to use or attempt to use a prohibited substance. So if you are an athlete, you know that the substance, it's not safe, it's not health, and it's not right. And the use, this is doping. Maybe we didn't find this on the, your urine, but it's doping. Presence of prohibited substance. What is this? We are on the competition, for example. We are collecting your urine. I'm there, I'm saying, hi, I'm Juliana, I'm anti-doping. I'm here for inviting you to go to the doping control station to provide a sample. And uh, please go with me. And we are going to the doping control station. We are going to explain more about this in, in some months, but just an overview, okay? In that room, we have some people there that are going to provide step-by-step -step the explanation how to collect a sample. And if in this sample, that's urine or blood, when you send to the lab and find some something there, this is also dopey. Did you understand? So it's not just to, to use and find. Just try to use. It's also a doping. Okay? Administration or attempt to administration. This is more for our coach, our physicians, our physios. If you try to give a prohibited substance to our, your athlete, this is considered doping. And even if you are not an athlete, you can be punished by our rules. All the three federations, okay? IPSA, World Ability Sport, or Virtus. We are against to have a professionals that provide prohibited substance to our athletes, okay? Possession of prohibited substance is the same. So please don't carry with you any prohibited substance, right? Complicity. For example, you are from the team of basketball in Virtus, and you know that someone is doing uh, some wrong to use prohibited substance, they are using drugs. What do you should do? You should talk with your coach. You should talk with your parents. You should talk with us. Why? Because you cannot be together with your athletes or your team that are doing something wrong and not tell. If you discover, the entire group can be punished. Okay? Don't be scared. But please, if you have any question, if you don't understand pretty well, talk with us. We are here all the time to help you. And prohibit association. This is a little bit more unusual, but for example, a doctor prescribed a prohibited substance and we sent to the doctor, you're not allowed to work with athletes for two years. You, as an athlete, cannot use this coach, this doctor, this physician, this physio for those two years just after the sanction, okay? This is a little bit more difficult, I know, but let's focus on the two, for, the first two for now, okay? Attempt to use or use a prohibited substance. Don't use a prohibited substance, okay? So let's come to this part. Manipulation or attempt to manipulation. What does it mean? For example, if you are going to the doping control station to provide a sample, I'm, I was there asking for you to come with me to provide a urine sample. And for any reason, you try to throw away the, the vessel, the cup, or you try to put something inside or try to damage this process. This is also considered doping, okay? So please ask the doping control officer the professional that is inside the room with you, is step by step what you should do. And don't try to mess up because this is not right and you can be punished, okay? Failure to, uh, to complete and update the, loca uh, the location. This is more important for World Ability Sport athletes, fencing, and judo, football, and go ball for IPSA, okay? Some athletes for those two federations, we have on the testing pool. Testing pool, it's a small group of athletes that us, the International Federation, we select. So for example, I want Moshi from Judo to provide information for us. I'm going to send a login, password, all the informations as possible. 
and she is going to put on this system that we call Adams, that's a, a system for WADA, all the location, all the whereabouts information about from 24 hours per day, seven days per week. Yes, please keep in mind, this is for World Ability Sport Athletes and IPSA just, okay? Virtus doesn't have athletes on this. If you are part of the RTP or TP that we call testing pool, please provide information on the right deadline date, okay? If you don't put the information there, after three strikes, we call, you can, you can be sanctioned. If you have any special question about this, uh, both uh, federations has have a special WhatsApp group. So please join us in the WhatsApp group and make questions there, okay? Next one, trafficking or attempting to trafficking. It's a little bit obvious, okay? So don't pass prohibited substance to other person or to other group, okay? The last one, it's act by a, an athlete or other person to disencourage to reality, reality or reporting a law enforcement. Sorry, this, can you hear this noise? No? Let no, me no, it's okay. Sorry. So if you, you know something happened in your team or if your colleague, please talk with us. And if someone tried to disencourage you, you must talk with her even more because it's not right, okay? Let's recap. The most important topics for our athletes today is the use or attempted to use a prohibited substance, okay? Manipulation or attempt to manipulation and evading, refusing or avoiding the obligation to performance. If I invited you to go to the doping control station, please go. I know that sometimes you are tired, you are, um, I'll, you must to go to the award ceremony, please don't worry. Go to the doping control station, talk with our officials and say, I have a warm ceremony, a medal ceremony, five minutes. May I go? You are going to the award ceremony. Don't worry. We are not going to get give any trouble. When as soon as finish the ceremony, you are going back to the doping control station to provide a sample. Any question to here, guys? I cannot see the chat box. Uh, I cannot see any questions yet in the chat box, Juliana, so uh, you can go ahead. Yeah, we don't have so many information for now. The biggest one was now, but one that it's maybe the most for today. I told to you that we have 11 possibilities to be considered as doped. However, doesn't matter if your coach gave you a prohibited substance, your doctor gave to you, or your friend, your parent. Unfortunately, the athlete is 100% responsible for any substance found in your body. So what that doesn't mean with this? Even if your mother, for example, gave to a pill for a headache and she doesn't know, you didn't know, uh, that it's prohibited substance inside this pill. You go to the doping control and you test positive. You, athlete, can be sanctioned, okay? So what's the tip that I have to you? All the time that someone gave to you supplements, medicines, any kind of this, you must remember, I'm an athlete, Sometimes I can go to the doping control station. Are you sure that this product, this medicine, this supplement doesn't have anything wrong because I can be punished for doping? And usually the person you are going to think two times before to give to you, okay? For sure, if you need to take a medicine for your health condition, you can take. We are going to talk about this, I think, in... June, that it's 
TUI, Therapeutic Use Exception. So if you have a question and if you take a medicine, you don't know if it's safe or not, talk with us. You can send an email to me for the all the, those three federations, okay? We have a team of doctors that are going to answer you if it's allowed or not allowed to take this medicine, okay? But always the athletes are responsible. doesn't matter if intellectual disability athletes or physical or visual impairment, okay? All of them are 100% responsible for anything they take. If they are blind and didn't know what they took, please ask help. Don't take the prohibits the, the substance, the medicine, with not sure what this. Okay. Uh, and why doping is prohibited, guys? Doping is prohibited because it's danger. Oh, came in Portuguese. Sorry, my mistake. But I'm going to to translate for English. Why doping is prohibited? First of all, because you must to play fair. Okay, and can be uh, uh, damage your health. Doping can be danger, okay? You can get sick, you can get a health problems with the, con with the continuous use of prohibited substance, okay? Doping is prohibited because it's not e equity. The, you must to have a fair competition, okay? You must to compete with all athletes clean. And the last one, it's the it's the principle of excellent respect and courage that's the, those three IPC uh, values. We must to keep this, okay? Doping is the the opposite again as to the, the to the play fair, to the spirit of sport. We must to respect the rules of the sport. Recatch, it's not health, it's not equity, and it's respect if you use doping. Oops, what is the Philip? So for now, I would like to, to introduce our friend, uh, Philip Hurst, please. And um, he's doing an amazing uh, stud with uh, intellectual impaired athletes. So please feel, uh, explain a little bit more on how we, they can join uh, your study. Thank you very much, Juliana. Really enjoyed your presentation and such important work that you're doing. Um, yes, I would just like to call out to any athletes who have an intellectual impairment and compete for verses. Uh, we're looking to understand your experiences of what Juliana has just been doing today and also anything related to anti-doping. So I'm just going to put something in the chat box so you can see and read it yourself so you don't have to um, listen to me and make notes. Uh, if you give me an email and if you compete uh, as an athlete an athlete with an intellectual impairment, please get in touch or contact uh, Mosh or Juliana and we'll be more than happy to talk to you just to learn about your experiences so we can talk to you and make things make things better. That's what we'd like to do. Thank you very much for that. Just to remember, it's just for Virtus athletes, okay? Uh, we would like to have for all of them. So let's push a little bit hard, Philip, for the next year to 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 have all the athletes. But it's just for Virtus intellectual impairment athletes. Okay, this 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 study. Okay, just to summarize, I'm having I have two quiz for you here. Uh, let's share again. Uh, So, first of all, what is doping? So, today we talk about what's doping. Option A, doping is the use of any prohibited or method. B, doping consists to use the irregular sport equipment. C, doping is make a fool during a match or competition. Or D, do doping is refusing to go to the competition. Which one do you believe that it's the right answer, guys? Please type up in chat. I'm going to give it just 30 seconds. I cannot see the chat. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, uh, I give the answer. <laughs> Congratulations, you, Juliana. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I hope all of you choose the letter A. Uh, doping is the use of a prohibitive method, okay? Uh, irregular sport equipment, as we told, it's uh, treats of integrity. Lose a match, it's part of the, the competition. It's always someone's going to win, someone's going to lose, so don't worry. Uh, refusing to go to competition, unfortunately not, but I suggest you to go in every competition as possible. So question two, why doping is prohibited? Letter A, because it's danger uh, to the athlete's health. Letter B, because it goes against the spirit of sport. Letter C, because it's go against the rules and it's unfair. Or letter D, all the previous, uh, the previous, uh, so hard to say this word. All the answers above. <laughs> uh, when I, I repeat uh, loud, it's because we can have the blind athletes here, okay, guys? And uh, as it's a PowerPoint presentation, we must to speak all the, the words and sometimes the images we have here. So this is why I sometimes talk too much, sorry. <laughs> so the answer is letter D, all above. So it's because it's danger for the health, against of spirit sport, and it's against of rules and unfair. So thanks everyone for coming and join this short seminar that's very small seminar we are going to have one per month with special topics uh, also moshi is going to record this video and post on our website you can find on the ipsa website the virtus website and word ability website okay we are going to try to do in spanish next time english and spanish okay and all the videos are going to be recorded on our website and youtube channel right Thanks. Yes, Virtus will definitely post the seminar on the uh, on their YouTube channel, and I am I think uh, World Ability Sport and IBSA will be doing the same, uh, just for easy access to all the people. Yeah, and um, please also follow our social medias that are very important because we are posting our informations, uh, videos. Uh, seminars, all information about anti-doping during the entire month on those social medias, okay? Instagram and Facebook. So sometimes you prefer Facebook in our country, so, but it's probably the same uh, uh, way to spell. Ipsa Blind Sports, Virts.Sports, and World Ability Sports. I'm going to stop to share. Uh, Thanks again, everyone. It was a pleasure to be here. And uh, I hope to see everyone in uh, less than a month, I think, for our next seminar regarding the list of prohibited substance. Maybe one of the most important. Please be here. Uh, we are preparing our athletes for Paris. So let's be. Uh, Juliana, I think we have a question. Can you see the chat box now? Now, yeah, uh, for uh, okay. Kiyomi, uh, 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 certificate a diploma. Yes, uh, what I'm suggesting to you is just to send an email to me because I'm going to... Uh, where? Kimon, uh, Kiyomi, are you from yeah. Virtus, Japan. World Ability or uh, IPSA? Uh, Japan. No, no, which federation? Federation is Paradise Sports. Okay, so this is Juliana dot so what is word sport dot com dot org just just a minute to double check because maybe I can make a mistake. So many So send me an email to just to remind me because I'm probably I'm going to forget. So this way uh, um, 
it's going to my to-do list. And if you need any information, guys, please get in touch with me and our team. We are more than pleasure to, to answer and support all of you. Uh, Moshi, do you, we know that if, if you have any AI athletes here? Uh, I'm not sure. I can't see um, any familiar names. Okay. Um, yeah. No, it's okay. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Moshi, please, if you have yeah. anything. Uh, nothing, just to give another shout out to all the people. If um, I'm not sure if any athletes with an intellectual impairment have joined this seminar, but there could be some parent or some representative from their national organization or any federation. If you know any athlete with an intellectual impairment who is registered with uh, Virtus uh, in the II1 class, then please uh, let us know if they are interested to take part in uh, the discussion session with Philip Hurst and uh, he's also going to compensate the participants with a small token. Uh, I forgot the amount, uh, Philips. Can you remind us? <laughs> yes, 75 pounds equivalent. So if you're in the US, you get it equivalent in dollars, uh, Real, Brazil, then you get it in the same amount. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's an again first come first serve basis uh, booking for the slots. So please, if you know anyone, then let the athletes know uh, to email me or Philip to book the slots. And the discussion is on tomorrow, right, Philip? Yes, but we can we can be flexible with that. Uh, okay. depending on who's in, uh, who gets in touch. So yes, just send an email and we can send more information out. Thank sure. you very much. Thank you so much once again and have a good week or a good night or a good sleep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you both. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.